What this is going to be is an attempt at putting together a collage of ideas from three of the thinkers that I think are the most prescient presently, that need to be taken into one's heart to some degree to really get at some of the solutions that, 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 that can happen in yourself, actually, more than anything, and then be brought to the wider world. The first one was that personally came from Ken Wilber, um, in that Ken had provided a framework or context not only to hold a great deal of information, um, but to really integrate the notions of spirituality in the modern context. To me, that was huge. Um, and I, I didn't see any way of doing that. I was already in philosophy, and I had not found a way to really express the concepts of what had been going on in my life at a young age to, to the professors to refute things, or at least not so much refute, but to um, flesh out conceptually um, experiences that I think were important to... Um, making sense of other philosophies, for example. But, but Ken Wilber gave this, this brilliant framework to integrate so many different contexts into a singular map. I'm not going to really touch on the map itself, other than to say that this uh, embraces a compassionate heart that is very much needed, as well as the understanding that you are a unique being and unique unto this world is something that drops or eliminates the nihilism or apathy if it's really understood in my opinion and still maintains the room for not only um, the complexities of science and, and empiricism and the actual beauty of empirical truth but also the systems theory and, and the weird things that spiral out of complexity theory which I will address later which I do take a little bit of a different position than Ken on in some regards, but still I think um, Ken's vision and brilliance far surpasses mine in many, many regards. His is a vision of the past, in my opinion, in many regards, of integrating those ideas that were of great genius of the past and, and hooking it into the ground of being in an unwavering move of integrity, something along those lines. And so we owe great debt, in my opinion, or at least great thanks for such a vision. The next one is Ken, uh, is Alex Jones. I, I spent about three years trying to really understand Alex's ideas um, because they are sprawling in many regards. Now, I don't agree with it all, as I don't, as you shouldn't with me, necessarily. But um, what he did point to was something that is very important at this time um, in regards to the situation that we find ourselves in, um, the power essence of why this power system is doing what it is doing to us. Um, now, I flesh it out in different ways than he does, but his historical expression of, of how these power elites got away with what they have gotten away with was essential to, I think, um, fully grasping the degree of darkness that we have to face into. In other words, he is not putting a pretty face on this. He's telling it as it as it is, at least as how he sees it. That's that's important. We all just have perspectives. How he sees it, um, and and I, I believe he too has a great deal of integrity. Although, again, it's just my opinion on it. But you can look into other resources to find similar things, in particular about the Federal Reserve and whatnot, and how it is the case, it seems, people can put magic, quote-unquote, spells upon people's minds. That is, if you deny these values, these broad spectrums of the idea that we are idea creators in many regards, 
then they can input those values into you in, in a major way and leave you as just a passive observer of the values that are floating by as they get more and more constricted. And furthermore, the intelligence behind this is great. The wisdom, not wisdom, the, the cleverness of such a structure is, is immense. So, again, without getting into particulars on Alex, that that depth of digging into the emotional darkness, I think, is also an important avenue for the modern people that are really wanting to make a big um, change presently should look into. And the last resource, I would say, is Terence McKenna. Now, this is more of a future-oriented position in many regards. He doesn't, I don't think, have... He didn't, he's now dead, have the the grounding that somebody like Ken Wilber has had. That is to say, the, the, the source of readied integrity from that, that ground of being, necessarily, as much as Ken maybe might. But he did have a vision of where we can go and, ha and how we are connected in a way that I don't think Ken quite understands. Because see, it seems to me that Ken draws more on the patterns of the past to make the, the, the picture that he makes. Again, his vision and ability to put together data is unlike anybody I've ever seen. And so there's no criticism for what he's done at all. Again, it's, it's brilliant. It's, and in a similar regard, um, Alex, Alex Jones doesn't have that same groundedness. But he is very much passionate and in love, it seems, with humanity. And he wants us to find a place of, of fruitfulness, of interaction, that, that really allows for innovation. I mean, his, his is fairly rationalistic in context, but it's, it's an important voice, more so than almost anybody else in my view. So when you get into to Terence, he's talking about um, issues that, that cannot be really addressed by Alex and that his, his, his view doesn't really look into the future very much at all. I don't think he can really see that. He just has a very good grasp of the present for the most part. Um, and so this is the difficulty of how to put Terence into this, this, con this construction, this picture, because his vision is far more environmental, and and there has been a, a conserv a, a lobby. What's the right word for this? Um, a consistent attempt to use environment as a means to co-opt the intel the fairly intelligentsia of this planet into more power corruption, to use their weaknesses and skew them towards the environmental dilemma so that they can continue their reign of power. There are very, very real environmental problems. There are very, very real social problems. And it is a matter of having our gaze a little bit more feminized, roughly speaking. Now, Ken, Ken Wilber wouldn't really say that, but I do think that that's the case. That... It is much more of a commutative thing that we really need to address presently. Um, a w we, we are moving more into a cyber-optic reality, and the Internet is a suggestive tool of what is going to be coming and the, the transference of this intermind space. Um, and... And to do this, to make this really come online, we do have to really reintegrate that care mechanism. And I think it is one of allowing the space for imperfection of mind to really arise so that novelty can occur in the individual. Because in this context, this, this false structure that we're pretty much living in um, of ideas 
we're not allowing any space for um, strangeness and, and diversity and complexity of, of idea to arise. And it's, it's essential to really put together our space in a way that makes sense, that's beautiful, and that's truly heartful. And something like the vision that Terence provides us with in and through things like psychedelics, although I don't, that's not necessarily my approach to this, although I do see it as a very good, good avenue for putting this together. There are others, I think. I think we can really um, dig into the intellectual move, the meditative move, but and, and, and then embody it integrally. But, but Terence's vision is perhaps the most able to take on, to be took, taken on on a global context, to go through things, well, for example, that I've gone through. It's, it's just, I don't think people would want to, nor that it would be really plausible, I don't think. So, you know, psychedelics... In, in a very uh, conscientious way can provide us with tools to allow our emotions to be reintegrated in many regards. Um, and, and this is a movement um, into that interobjective space in many regards that is, is needed to deal with the global systemic crises that we're facing presently that just cannot be faced with this individuated mind that can only see from really this perspective. I mean, in some sense, that's always how it's going to be, but with a degree or tool of, of transcending the self in some, some form, we're able to pay more mind to these other um, realities and or beings that, that need to be paid mind to presently. Be well.